Well, hello, Martin. I hear that you've uh, been with us already. You get to be on our show twice at Event Icons Live during IMAX. So I'm Tahira. Hi, Tahira. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Martin Van Nest. So you have a lot of acronyms in your world, and you have another acronym to talk to us about today. So tell me about this new acronym. Well, it's an acronym that's uh, trying to compete with uh, Q&A. Uh, oh, I think Q&A is... What is Q&A? Yeah, most people uh, know it and use it at every session. It's questions and answers oh, at the end yes. of, of yes. a presentation. So uh, that's a two-letter acronym. And uh, I was thinking, you know, we could do with another one because Q&A is not good enough. It's just a few people that uh, are activated in a group. Uh, while with conversations and inputs, which is CNI, uh, conversations allow everybody to speak. So you create small groups ah. and you give them a topic. Yes. And they speak to each other for a couple of minutes and then give some input to the speaker again. So when you say small group, how small? I think ideal size is six. Okay. And for the simple reason that with uh, six people, you usually don't get to do a situation where you have two conversations at the same time. But you can also split them up in three, two times three. Or you could split them up in pairs, and then you have three pairs in a group of six. So a little table and six people sitting around it is a great, uh, great format. You know, we, we actually just did an event uh, in Verbier, which was a lovely event. But we actually had tables of six, and we split them into two groups of three. And you were right. It worked very well. Occasionally, we would dip into the other conversation. But for the most part, we stuck to our threes. So C&I. All right. Yeah. Now, what, who is C&I good for? Well, I think first and foremost is the participants. Um, there is three great reasons why participants uh, love it. They learn more, they network in a very intense way, and they just love it. Why do you say they learn more? Well, because the speaker gets less time to speak. You know, the more the speaker speaks, the less people learn because it's too much information. So if you give them a break, speaker stops, we, we start talking as participants. We will talk about the topic and we will learn from each other. We will put it into context, we will put it into our own world with our own examples and we learn more by doing that. We learn from each other. Um, and I also get to know you because you're talking and I'm listening and then I'm responding and we have a conversation. So I get to know you rather quickly and so it's good for the networking. And number three, we just love it. You know, We enjoy it to talk and we enjoy to share and meet new people. So it's a lot of fun as well. So CNI, good for the participants. Who else is it good for? Uh, speakers love it. First, at first, they're quite nervous and skeptical, and they don't think participants will have s anything to talk about. And then, then they see this works. And then they and discover that actually having a break uh, in their presentation, instead of having one hour to go you know, all the way and, and be concentrated for 60 minutes, is a pain. Uh, while if you do 10 minutes and you can have a break, drink a glass of, of water, uh, walk around a bit, uh, and look at your next slides, it's quite relaxing for speakers. And they, s they also seem to love it at the end. You know, it's interesting you say that. So I'm uh, leading a, moderating a panel, my least favorite thing. Quite honestly, I do not love panels for many reasons, but I'm moderating a panel at MPIWEC this year, and they actually sent out an, an imperative, not a suggestion, an imperative that every speaker in every session must pause after 10 minutes for a moment of either reflection or discussion. That is awesome. Yes, no no excuses, no, like I said, it's, it was delivered as an imperative, so which I thought was really interesting. Wonderful. So Did they have know, a name for it? Uh, it? They called it the 10 minute imperative. The 10 minute imperative. So, okay. or something like that. But basically, yeah. I, I mean, the idea, you know, you and I both talked about this before, that we know that really after 10 or 11 minutes, you are no longer absorbing the information and you do need time to yeah. reflect, contextualize, and whether you do that through a quiet moment or a discussion moment, it doesn't really matter Absolutely. how you do it. It just matters that you do do it. And so yeah. I think it's really interesting that they've really taken, it's a hard stand. There's not, oh. so, which I think is really great. So yeah, that's what happens when they put Jesse States in charge of learning. Very good. Yeah, I, I look forward to see the, 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 the results of that. You know, how many people actually mm -hmm. do it because most people are skeptic or afraid to do this, mm. but we need to help them with this. And uh, if we can uh, find it to be as simple and as easy to use as Q&A, then I think we have changed the industry. I think it's probably easier to use than Q&A because very few people want to get up in public and ask a question. Mm. But anybody, really, even the most introverted person, can be comfortable 
in a setting where it's a one-on-one -on -one or one to two or three sort of situation. So yeah. I think it then does appeal to your different learner types, which is also important. Yeah. C and I, I hope uh, it catches on and I hope <laughs> we can make this like a, a standard, you know, what yes. MPI is doing is fabulous. And if we can make that a new standard, I'm sure, you know, after what, what uh, MPI is doing, these, part, these speakers will go away and they will do it again because they will discover something that is really fun to do for them yeah. as well. So participants, good for them. Speakers, good for them. Anybody else that CNI is uh, good for? Our, the organizer, of course, because he will have, or she will have, or they will have much more happy participants. Well, which leads to better evaluations, which leads to people sometimes not even understanding why they want to come back, just knowing that they want to come back. Absolutely, because they just enjoy these sessions so much more than lectures of 60 minutes or 50 minutes. Well, and I always look at events being that, you know, you sell your you know, your participation through the content that we're saying is going to be provided. But the reason we come back is because of the connections. So that's a good one. Absolutely. It's hard to you. sell, but it's uh, it's the way people decide to come back. I, I think that's true. And there's actually some really interesting new research that I've seen coming out from Bear Analytics out of DC, which is that the three, the three reasons people go back to an event okay. is content, mm -hmm. networking. Do you know what the third one is just for fun? Uh, having fun habit habit uh, habit done it before. they always go yeah so it's in their budget it just becomes something like how interesting is that hmm. as a statistic and so That's number three well and i think if we start to you know if you are an organizer and you start to look at who's returning why are they returning i mean there's lots of studies that show you know a hybrid event will create some fomo which will drive participation or but nobody's ever talked about habit Habit, that's Being a good one. A, a buying reason. Habit so. is always wha what we say when we do things the way we've done before yeah. uh, with conferences and meeting formats. You know, we just do yes. the same thing every year. So I think we tend to think of habit as being a negative, whereas if we look at habit as a reason that we can finish an event and w as you finish that event, you can launch your sponsorship, exhibit sales, ticket sales for the next year. A Boom. Month, yeah. Great stuff. You know, you're. I think you're already ahead. So C and I. Yeah. Remind us what CNI stands for? Conversations and input. Thank you, Martin. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, Tahira. It's great to be here.